Imagine a world where cars run on water, not gasoline, not electricity, just plain water. It sounds like science fiction, right? But for one man, this was his life's mission. A revolutionary idea that could have changed the world forever. This is the story of Stanley Meyer, the man who claimed to invent the car that runs entirely on water, and the mystery of his untimely death. Stanley Allen Meyer was born on August 24, 1940 in Ohio. From an early age, Meyer exhibited a passion for invention and experimentation. While not formally educated as a scientist or engineer, his creativity and ability to think outside the box made him a unique figure in the world of inventors. Growing up in the mid-20th century, Meyer witnessed the rapid industrialization of America and the growing reliance on fossil fuels. Gasoline-powered cars on the road, coal and oil kept the lights on. But Meyer wasn't convinced this was sustainable. He believed humanity's dependence on fossil fuels was both dangerous and short-sighted. By the time the 1970s oil crisis hit, Meyer's concerns became even more pressing. Long lines at gas stations and skyrocketing oil prices revealed the weakness of the global energy system. For Meyer, this wasn't just a problem, it was an opportunity. While others worried about the rising cost of fuel, Meyer began to explore an idea that could eliminate reliance on oil entirely. He believed the answer lay in water, a resource so abundant it could be found virtually anywhere on Earth. What if there was a way to use water as fuel? What if vehicles could bypass gasoline altogether? This was the birth of his vision, a car powered entirely by water. Meyer claimed that he had discovered a revolutionary way to split water into its basic components hydrogen and oxygen, and used the hydrogen as fuel. While the idea of using hydrogen as a fuel source wasn't new, Meyer's claim suggested he had found a way to make the process far more efficient than ever before. To understand Meyer's concept, let's break it down. Water, as you know, is made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, H2O. By applying an electric current to water, it's possible to split these molecules into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas through a process called electrolysis. The hydrogen then can be burned as a fuel source. However, conventional electrolysis is energy intensive, often requiring more energy to split the water than hydrogen provides when burned. This is where Meyer's invention stood apart or so he claimed. Meyer called his device the water fuel cell. He said it used a process he referred to as electrical resonance to split water molecules with far less energy than traditional methods. According to Meyer, this made the process not only efficient, but practical for everyday use. Meyer demonstrated his invention with a custom-built dune buggy that he claimed could run on water. This wasn't just any vehicle. It was a symbol of what the future could look like. He showcased the vehicle to the public, drawing significant attention from investors, the media, and even government officials. Meyer asserted that his water-powered car could travel hundreds of miles on just a single gallon of water. He said the only byproduct of the process was water vapor, making it environmentally friendly alternative to gasoline-powered vehicles. His invention promised a future free from shackles of oil dependency, where wars over oil reserves and environmental damage caused by fossil fuels would be relics of the past. But not everyone was convinced. From the very beginning, Meyer's claims were met with skepticism from the scientific community. Critics argued that his device violated the fundamental laws of physics, particularly the first and second law of thermodynamics. The first law, also known as the law of conservation of energy, states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed. The second law establishes that every energy conversion process comes with the loss of usable energy. In simpler terms, Mars claims seem too good to be true. Despite the skepticism, Mars continued to push his invention forward. He received several patents for his water fuel cell and even attracted financial backing from investors who believed in his vision. The scrutiny didn't stop there. As interest in Meyer's invention grew, so did the questions surrounding its legitimacy. If his technology was truly revolutionary, why hadn't it been adopted on a larger scale? Why wasn't it been mass-produced or replicated by other scientists? Meyer's answers often pointed to sabotage. He claimed powerful interests such as oil companies and governments wanted to suppress his invention to protect the global energy market. He alleged that he had been followed, threatened, and pressured to abandon his work. 
In 1996, two of Myers investors filed a lawsuit against him, accusing him of fraud. They claimed that the water fuel cell did not work as Meyer had promised and that their investments had been wasted. The case went to court and Meyer's water fuel cell was scrutinized by experts. After reviewing the evidence, the court ruled against Meyer, concluding that his invention was nothing more than a conventional electrolysis device dressed up with impressive terminology. Meyer was ordered to repay $25,000 to the investors, a devastating blow to his reputation. But he continued to insist that his technology was real and that powerful interests were working to suppress it. Stanley Meyer's life took a tragic and mysterious turn on March 20, 1998. That evening, Meyer was dining at a restaurant with his brother and two Bulgarian investors. According to his brother, Meyer suddenly clutched his throat, ran outside and collapsed. His last words? They poisoned me. Meyer died in a parking lot. The official cause of death, according to the Franklin County coroner, was a cerebral aneurysm. But for many, the circumstances were far too suspicious to ignore. The conspiracy theories surrounding Stanley Meyer's death have fueled debates for decades. Was he silenced by oil companies, car manufacturers, or even government agencies? After all, if his water fuel cell technology was real, it posed a direct threat to the multi-trillion dollar global energy industry. Supporters of this theory point to Meyer's own words. He had repeatedly claimed that he was being followed and threatened by unnamed entities who wanted to shut him down. They also point to the timing of his death, which coincided with meetings that could have advanced his invention on a global stage. However, skeptics argue that Meyer's claims were nothing more than false science and his death was just a tragic coincidence. They point to the court ruling against him as evidence that his invention didn't work and couldn't have disrupted the energy market. If Meyer truly had a functional water fuel cell, why hasn't it been replicated in the decades since his death? Scientists and inventors around the world have had access to his patents, yet no one has been able to reproduce his results. So, what are we left with? Was Stanley Meyer a visionary, silenced for trying to change the world, or was he a dreamer who truly believed in an idea that science couldn't support? The truth may never be known. His water fuel cell technology has never been successfully replicated, and the details of his invention remain a mystery. His story, however, continues to inspire hope and curiosity. For some, it's a reminder of potential for innovation and the power of persistence. For others, it's a cautionary tale about the need for scientific rigor and transparency. One thing is certain, Stanley Meyer's story challenges us to imagine a future where energy is clean, sustainable, and accessible to all. Whether he was a revolutionary inventor or a man ahead of his time, his legacy endures. What really happened to Stanley Myers? Was his invention real or was it a hoax?